eating, uh, the electricity they use. So one long haul flight is a fifth of that, which is a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the headline figures of 160 are 16 times what that is. That's 16 people's overall annual consumption um, just for our short haul flights for one conference. Uh, no, not for one conference, for every conference. Um, servers is the next thing I looked at. They're not as high as I thought, these emissions. Um, using data from Andre Verri on the number of physical servers and the number of AWS, AWS buckets and their physical locations, um, which affects the carbon intensity of the electricity they use, uh, I modeled the base load and the impact of running a single CI pipeline, which we kind of assume raises the load to maximum for 20 minutes, say. Um, and then I multiplied that up by the number of pipelines, the number of projects, um, and estimated the impact of the network usage because sending things over a network doesn't come for free either. That takes about 0 0.06 kilowatt hours per gigabyte. Um, and that all sums up to 6.7? Yes. Sorry, I recompiled these slides. The numbers change every time I change the model. Um, so in summary, our emissions per year for servers and networks are pre pretty low. That's less than one person one person's annual emissions. Um, so that's that's good. That's less than I thought. Looking at the users, it's a slightly different story. Um, for the, the limited studies I could find of this, laptop power consumption varies by about a factor of three between idle and 100% CPU. Um, and based on the 2014 estimate of the number of Ubuntu users, I think there are maybe 15 million full-time GNOME users or users of desktops which are largely GNOME based. Um, so we can see that the, the emissions from the use of GNOME are relatively large, but that basically entirely comes from the fact that there are a lot of users. Um, for comparison, this number of um, 9,600 tons CO2 a year is about 4,400 return transatlantic flights. Um, the model here ignores network usage because I have no idea how much bandwidth all the users of GNOME use, but that would add a bit more at 0.06 kilowatt hours per gigabyte. Um, so if we look at the second line, the reduction per CPU percent is the amount that I roughly think we can reduce the emissions by for every 1% of CPU usage that we reduce uh, GNOME desktop usage by. So if we manage to make a lot of performance improvements that on average reduce someone's CPU usage by 1%, you multiply that by all the users and you get uh, about 19 people's annual emissions, which is quite a lot. So there's, there's a lot of savings to be made there. Um, as I said before, it was surprising to find that I, I couldn't really work out how many users we actually have. So the estimate is quite old and quite rough. It might be, it's going to be the right order of magnitude, but it's not going to be perfectly precise. Um, another thing to note is that the carbon emissions for users depend highly on where they are. So someone in Norway, for example, will emit rel relatively little carbon for the same amount of computer usage as someone in the US because Norway uses hydro, whereas the US is 27% powered by coal, which is, as we saw before, a lot worse than hydro. But again, I don't have the data on who is where, so I can't estimate um, how much their carbon intensity was. So what can we do about this? Well, we can do the same thing that we do with any kind of optimization problem. We can monitor it, we can budget for what's allowable, and then we can make changes to bring ourselves within the budget. And we can continue monitoring and making changes in future to make sure it doesn't go awry later on. Um, in particular, I think we need to work out what's an acceptable budget for the annual CO2 emissions of the entire project, and then work out what we need to do to stay within that budget, and split it up between different areas of carbon emissions within the project. Here is such a budget. Um, on the left, I've got the current emissions. In the middle, I've got a proposed budget based on some eyeballing of the numbers and where I think we can make savings. And then the percentage change is on the right. Um, this isn't a strict budget in the sense that it fits in with the global budget. As I said before, it's very hard to work out how the emissions that we have remaining over the entire planet can be allocated between countries and companies and sectors. And so I haven't tried doing that. That's an open problem which is going to have to get solved 
by someone um, probably very politically um, pretty soon. Um, so this budget is entirely based on where I think we can make savings and it's open for discussion and rethinking and analysis. Um, one thing that I do think is certain is that we should not increase our emissions further, um, basically because nobody can. It's, it's not moral. So in this last section of the talk, um, I'm going to give some suggestions for how I think we could reduce the emissions to get something close to that budget. Um, I'm going to focus on the lowest hanging fruit and the biggest emitters. Um, and so the users of GNOME, not through any particular fault of their own, have the biggest impact, so it's where we can make the biggest savings. Um, as I said, I think the biggest change we can make is to reduce the average CPU usage. Um, or we can reduce people's uptime, so we can try and make their computing sessions a bit more productive, and so they spend less time on the computer. Um, they have equivalent impacts. Um, every project within GNOME can work on this. It affects everything from the kernel right up to desktop apps. Um, there are small gains you can make by improving the algorithms you use, and there are big gains you can make by uh, desktop-wide initiatives to enter lower CPU sleep states, stop waking up, uh, use Android's wake locks, for example, for something big, uh, freeze background apps, hibernate rather than suspend. There's a lot of options. Um, and cumulatively, they should add up to quite a big impact. Um, other options for uh, things to do on the desktop involve make, uh, adding new features to make it easier to work from home, which would reduce commuter travel, or reduce the need for new hardware or peripherals, which reduces the carbon costs of manufacturing those devices. Um, although most users probably don't use so many peripherals with GNOME because, they, yeah, we don't support them. Um, transport. Oh, sorry. There are some other suggestions for the users. Um, transport is the next biggest emitter. In terms of transport, I think it it makes sense to make big reductions for our short distance travel first, rather than our long distance travel. So travel within Europe or within a continent, um, rather than across the ocean. Um, Rustfest is an example. Uh, spent time to organise social train journeys to the upcoming conference, um, sort of trying to encourage people to go by train and make it fun so you can meet up with people on the way there and sort of have a pre-conference discussion. Um, one approach to reducing our travel impact might be to assign a CO2 budget to each event um, out of the project's overall <coughs> annual budget, um, but that would need impact uh, input from the event organisers and the travel committee. I think it's probably the only way forward with that, but requires more discussion. Um, here are some other suggestions for transport. Um, some are more radical, some are less radical. Uh, we, need, we do need to work out the budget before we start making radical changes, um, but we need to keep the option open for making the radical changes if the budget says so. Um, telepresence, in particular, is an area which other conferences have been trying with um, success over a number of years. Um, and if you want to look into that, look into SIG CHI, which is an ACM conference, and they've been doing telepresence with robots or in-person helpers for several years now. So it's, it's obviously going well for them. Servers, um, the big change we can make there, um, while the overall impact will be low because the proportion of our emissions from servers is low, um, we can still make changes, and the big impact would be to move to renewable power for them. We might have it already, but our sysadmins don't know because they're shared hosting. Um, another big impact we can make is to reduce the number of physical servers, which reduces the base load, and that's already ongoing, which is fantastic. Other suggestions for servers? Yeah, reducing the number of physical machines, optimizing our CI pipelines and making them faster so they use um, less 100% CPU uh, for short periods. That would be better for all of us because it means faster turnaround on CI, um, and there are ways you can do that um, by preparing Docker images in advance or using the new pipeline features in GitLab. Um, finally, all of us can make an impact even outside the project. Um, this has all been talked about, put into articles, blogged about, put on the news a lot, so I'm not going to go into it in much depth. Um, but these changes will all be different for each of us. Um, they'll depend on our circumstances, but generally you need to reduce transport, um, reduce the carbon cost of food, 
work remotely if if that works for you because that's an excellent way to reduce uh, commuting um, and if you want to look into it further which I obviously recommend um, there's a calculator there which the WWF provide which is uh, quite a nice high level introduction to it and gives fairly targeted results so that's it um, I hope this is the start of the discussion and the analysis and the changes. Um, I think we need, to we need to think about where the responsibility for carbon budgeting for the project lies. Um, the board have an open issue, open issue for considering this topic of environmental impact, um, which was kicked off in the elections recently. Uh, and part of the response to that could be to decide where the responsibilities lie for budgeting and for sort of... Um, saying when enough is enough um, and I'll just finish with saying that a lot of the media coverage of climate change is fairly doom laden um, we do need to make big changes in the next 10 years but they are not impossible it's um, if we look at the data and make the changes where they are appropriate then I think it's, it's certainly possible to do it in the next 10 years and certainly possible to reach zero emissions by 2050 um, but we do need to get on with it um, thank you to those who provided data for the talk. Um, the bibliography, which is in the Git repository linked to there, has a number of references. If you're going to read one of them, then I'd suggest the IPCC's SR15 report. It's a couple of pages long and it covers everything that has been agreed by all of the top climate scientists and every government. Um, so it's, it's pretty canonical. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. Got time for questions? Yeah? When it comes to servers, what percentage of the policy of the mic is due to the servers themselves and uh, as opposed to the tooling them? Because I uh, saw some where uh, we're using about like, community servers and like, like, you know, the So the question was um, when it comes to servers, what percentage of the power usage is due to powering the server and what percentage is due to cooling it? Um, I don't have an answer. I think it varies a lot depending on where the server is hosted, um, as it does for the carbon intensity of powering the server, because some data centers are completely renewable and some are definitely not. Um, so it, it varies hugely, and I think the only reasonable response is to look at where your particular server is being hosted um, and ask, ask the people who host it. But it is a power in heat. It, the power equals the heat, so that it equals the cooling amount. So it is proportional to the amount of power used. So reducing power and reducing cooling are the same. Cool. Thank you.